Ahead, and I put five reasons why um, they keep killing us, and so I'm going to get into that uh, in just a few seconds. Uh, yep, everybody's coming on. Uh, and, give and again, we're sorry for being a little late, a little technical issues. Yes, but nothing uh, that we can't overcome. Donovan's always late. I'm just kidding. It had nothing to do with Donovan. It was all me and my equipment on this time. And so sorry about the Every um, time. <laughs> 92% of the time. Wait, wait, okay? Spectrum just up my uh, <laughs> speed. So it ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't the, it ain't my Wi Fi. <laughs> exactly. All right, so anyway, you guys, um, what's happening on your end, your neck of the woods? Facebook, we're not ready yet. I yet. Yet, yet. Um, uh, hope you guys got that piece of chicken. You're yeah, doing your piece Sunday. of chicken. You got some. For me, I'm drinking some water because I'm thirsty. Dallas what's Cowboys, up, Sydney? Okay. Dallas Cowboys are playing. And I, How do you know? Well, I know they're playing. I just haven't watched the oh, game. Oh, got it. Yeah, another plan. The Texans were playing earlier I too. I see you repping the NFL today too. Well, let's put this hat on. Because uh -huh. it's, it's a wait, wait. Dallas Cowboys oh. hat. <laughs> what happened to your wig? Oh, I had that. <laughs> I, I was going to wear that, but it's too hot. You ain't lying, it's too okay? Hot. Yeah. I have so, my nice straight one too. So we're just waiting for um, a few more people to get on before you get started. But um, I don't know if you guys saw the picture that I uh, put up. It was Friday. Y'all saw the, uh, for those of you guys that are on here, Donovan had the wig on. This fool. Went out to eat with this wig on. Hey, October is the only month that uh, black women who wear weaves could go out there looking like clowns and nobody thinks nothing of it. Because <laughs> Halloween is coming. Yeah, yeah, this wig on and my daughter was just beside, beside herself. Beside herself. <laughs> she said, this is unacceptable. Talk about how can you co-sign this? You think this is funny? And I said, you're just mad because you don't have friends as cool as I do. Yes, and, 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 and then her... The way she's upset like that, how do you think we feel as men? That's the that is the proper reaction to have when you're sitting next to a clown. Okay. Donna will sit up there looking like somebody great auntie. Uh, but anyway, I'm ready to get started with okay, you. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All Let right. me get it going. <clears throat> So hello everybody, it is me, Demetra K, and I'm sitting here with Donovan, his heart don't pump no Kool-Aid, occasionally wear a wig, Sadiq. Uh <laughs> Works for Tyler Perry, it should work for me. You know, <laughs> you might be on to something. So anyway, thank you guys for joining us on uh, Facebook Live, our Ride or Die audience, who we have this great conversation with. Every YouTube, Sunday. YouTube, you know what? You guys keep asking me to go live on YouTube, and so I will. Yeah, we're we're going to start doing that, yeah. yeah. We, we do have a camera to do that. Yes. We just haven't got that. going to start going live so we can take some of your questions as well. And hello to you on the podcast, Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Podbeam, mm -hmm. and, and something else. And regular YouTube. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, as you guys can see, our topic is... Um, Five reasons why they keep killing us. Now, of course, they're my five reasons. I'm not saying they're the five reasons, but they're five reasons that I can think of. And so I also like to say a big thank you to Marcus Guyton, yes. who does all that he does behind the, the scenes. scenes. He makes this show go to outer Everywhere. space. space. Right. So we say thank you to him. Um, and uh, uh, re re sure. re real quick. Uh, five reasons. Now, you, you were saying that the topic is based on, um, I recently heard that a, another young black person was killed. We're going to get into it. Okay. So I also like to say, though, for those of you guys who are watching and listening, that the purpose of the Demetri K Show is to promote black love, knowledge, and understanding of all the things that go on in our community to make us an even better people. And with that, I'll go ahead and get started. And so... <clears throat> Five reasons why they keep killing us, in my opinion, right? And I have a bonus one at the end. Okay, and so for those of you, too, who are watching them on the um, watch parties, please come over to my page so I can see your comments because for whatever reason, I can't see 
the comments from the watch parties. And I understand a lot of you guys do comment. I just can't see it. So come on this side. So anyway, five reasons why they keep killing us. Yet again, we heard about another black person being murdered wholesale by the police. Specifically, a white Fort Worth uh, Texas police officer murdered a black woman by the name of Atatiana Jefferson, also known as Tay, early Sunday morning as she was in her own home. Where have we heard that before? Mm. We just saw a case uh, be tried in front of the world, Amber Geiger uh, murdering Botham Jean in his house. Okay? She was playing a video game with her eight-year-old nephew, to be exact. A neighbor noticed that Tay's door was open, so he called the police because he thought it was rather odd that her door would be open in, at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I think that was the right thing to do. If it's your neighbor, you see something odd, right. okay, weird, let me call and, you know, police Sleep and make up. sure everything's okay, it's right? Good. So after the police arrived, they walked around her house, um, around the outside of her house, with their guns drawn, looking in windows. Once Tay was spotted through the window by the police officer, he yelled, put your hands up. Show your hands. Almost immediately after Why? that. Why would you need to do that? Because he hasn't even got a uh, reasonable suspicion that there's been a crime. Right. Well, almost immediately after that, he shot and murdered her. An expert said that it would have taken her about at least 10 seconds to realize what was even going on mm -hmm. after he gave her that command. Right. You know, so you have... Somebody yelling at you, it's 2 in the morning, you're not yeah. thinking somebody's outside of your window. You right, and, and you don't know if she's had drank or, you Nothing, know. well, just imagine if I was just to do that to you, even sitting right here, mm -hmm. say, hey, put your hands up. Yeah, you're trying to. Yeah, you're like, well, okay, why it was going on? Mm -hmm. So the next person said it would have taken her at least 10 seconds to even try to come to terms as to what was going on. Okay, now, honestly, Tay never knew what hit her. She died at the scene. They, they did say that after he shot her. He tried to give her CPR, but she hey. ended up dying um, due to him shooting her, right? Now, the neighbor, James Smith, is terribly upset and said that he regrets mm -hmm. calling the police. He's just horrified. He's just, like, besides himself. Like, he could not believe that they went and killed her, right? So, Tay was um, a pre-med student at Xavier University in Louisiana mm -hmm. and was home at the time taking care of her very sick mom. It's also said that Tay was uh, the sole provider of her family uh, mm. for whatever reason. And so there, you know, goes that's, the livelihood of her yeah, family. Yeah, financial aid goes a long way. takes care of a lot of stuff. Right. Well, you know, she worked there as yeah. well because mm -hmm. she's, she's a pre-med yeah, student. Pre -med. Okay. So um, as usual, the police are trying to smear the black victim's reputation by saying Wait. there was a gun in the house. Yeah, I saw. I heard about that too. Did they sprinkle the crack? No, nah, they yeah. probably <laughs> did sprinkle it. <laughs> Okay. But so, I mean, it's not a laughing matter, right. but that is usually... And I'm going to get to every last one of you guys' comments. So they're trying to say, right. oh, well, there was a gun in the house. And, it, you know, and, and guess what? Mm -hmm. There probably was. That's not a crime. Right. But they also stated that it doesn't appear, they haven't confirmed or denied that uh, the gun was on her person at the time. But again, to your point, I'm at home. Right. And it, you know... And, and what kind of gun? She has a son. Maybe she's playing army with her son. Maybe, you know... Well, right. So, um... That's their way of casting doubt on her innocence, right? Let's go ahead and get that out there. Well, you know, there was a gun in the house, right? Okay, so why do we keep getting murdered by the police? Well, I have five reasons. Again, these are my five reasons you guys can add on. Um, and uh, so first, the police departments are run by white supremacists, and one of their main objectives is to subjugate and murder black people. And keep us in fear. Right. And, and that's why they were created in America in the first place. So let's not forget that, right? So we're going to put them at the top. That is their job to keep, as you said, black people in fear. Number two, we will not unify at all. Mm -hmm. Okay? We get mad, but we won't unify. Not at all. And I'm going to keep reiterating that. Now, how many black people are still watching football? Uh, a lot. and uh, Quite a bit. I'm wearing my hat, but I didn't, haven't been watching football. Not that we need to unify behind Kaepernick. I think we should, but unify behind why he was doing what right. he was doing in the first place, taking the need to bring uh, awareness to police brutality and the wholesale murder of black people. Well, Jay-Z solved the whole problem. Right. So we won't unify. And there's a whole other host of other reasons why we won't unify. We don't have time for that. Three, we don't practice group economics. 
Imagine if we started spending our uh, most of our money with each other. As Dr. Claude Anderson always says, it would be a game changer on all levels. Politics, mm -hmm. education, business, media, the courts, and the police departments. If we have some financial influence, we can say, hey, you know what? You, you, you killed one of ours. We need somebody to ask for it. Oh, guess what? We got a lot of money, and we are also using it. Mm -hmm. money, to, right. Money talks. Money walks. talks. Exactly. Number four. We are too stuck on waiting for God to do for us what we should be doing for ourselves. I asked this question last night. I was on um, Dr. Um, call him Dr. Uh, Jerry Monroe's show, and I asked this question: If white and black people are worshiping the same religion and same God, what are they doing differently than we are doing? Right? We have. Why have they, I'm sorry, why have they succeeded in the last 500 years and we have suffered and struggled over that last same 500 years? Like, what is the difference? What are they doing differently? Five, we don't love ourselves. As Jonel Muhammad, he's often on the show, but he's not here right now, says, you protect what you love. Mm -hmm. If we loved ourselves, we would die trying to make sure we are protected. Instead, we're just dying. Right yeah. now, and I'll give you guys a bonus before I finish. Everyone knows we're afraid of the oppressor to the point of paralysis. Jesus, we might yell and shout, but we will not make a move because we are afraid. So my question here is, among a whole other lot of questions, what do we need to do to become unafraid? Because at this point, we are on the verge, and I know... A lot of people will probably roll their eyes like, yeah, right. But we're on the verge of extinction. Yes. Do you guys realize that black people are on the verge of extinction? And, you know, if you know history, that was the plan. If you look at something like eugenics, that was the plan. To get rid of black people and the downtrodden and the burden on society. Because after they freed us from slavery, we were considered a burden no longer an asset and so let's get rid of them and that plan like a lot of times we think oh well that was so long ago no that plan and, is still and, in and, effect and, and they want us especially these younger people to believe that oh things are different things, things are not different they, things are pretty much the same no and they're worse if, 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 if what you if what she's saying is not is not true why is the democratic party not, totally ignoring the black votes and the black people and catering everything to uh brown people and illegals why are they doing that? Because they are taking over. Exactly. And they the are going to have, yeah, uh, voting power. Right. And, you know, black people, well, you know, po politicians. strong. Yeah, well, pol politicians aren't really focused on us anymore mm -hmm. because they've already got us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, right. we're a then, done deal. And then a population that does not grow in 60 years that maintains a steady 13% population, there's no point in right. worrying about us. And Cindy says, what's up, fam? Must be the uh, winds for the delay. No, you know, actually, it's not windy today, but as you can hear, the winds have jacked me up. <laughs> I've been, like, sick ever since. And you say, uh, Spider-Man shirt, Donovan? No, this is Venom. This is Venom, see? Got you on that one. Venom. <laughs> what's happening, today? No, but it was the black Spider-Man suit, too, so. And uh, Cindy says, you losing badly to the Jets. But he doesn't care about that. <laughs> we, he don't care nothing about football. No, nothing I can nothing. do. Nothing, because I'll, I'll, I'll elbow him in his ribs. <laughs> <laughs> and hello to everybody who is on here. And Cindy says, stop calling the police. Okay, so let's address that. Mm -hmm. Like we say, stop calling police. But what is the police for? What is their main? They are protect and serve. They're supposed to protect and serve. You feel like you're in danger. Somebody's mm -hmm. running up on you or somebody's trying to break in your house. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? Busters, right. <laughs> right, you know. <laughs> you're going to call the police because mm -hmm. that's what we're supposed to do. Hey, 911. I actually saw an article today. I didn't read it because I didn't have time. But the heading says something like black people need a new number to call instead of 911 right. or calling the police because we are being murdered at rapid rates but he, by but, the police. But, but see, here's the funny thing. You would think with all of us that work in the security field, uh, you, we'd have people in the community that have you know, security background. You know what I mean? The, right. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just saying. Everybody works as a security guard somewhere, and yet... Our community is. Well, I just think as a society, we're conditioned to call the police. Hey, mm -hmm. something happens to you, call 911. Right. right. But as, you know, the great, um, one of the greatest hip-hop groups of all time said. What? 
911 is a joke. 911 is a joke. 911 yeah. <laughs> is a joke. I you know, I'm not an enemy. Right. <laughs> So, I mean, it, it, it is becoming a joke. I mean, God, he called the police because you see your neighbor might be in distress and they go in there. They don't even like, you know, what happened to the bullhorn? Hello? Right. Who is that in the house? I mean, right. so if they're trying to say they fear for their lives. And, and, and then here's another thing. Why aren't they, why aren't they teaching uh, your basic human uh, rights and your um, uh, civil rights here in the United States in school? When we went to school, they gave us a briefing thing. And I remember in high school, you know, government, you just got to tell you your basic rights. Right. right. You, you, if you go to most people nowadays, they got, they can't even tell you the rights. Because like, like, like I said, if yeah. a policeman shows up on my door and he says, can I talk to you for a minute or can I come to you? No, you can't come to my house without a warrant. you got to know the basic. But Get off I my fear property. people just let them in exactly. because, you know, oh, they're going to come in anyway. Same thing yeah. is, uh, when you leave out of Walmart. People are automatically conditioned to show their receipt. You don't have to show your damn receipt. You walk the fuck out. Right. Unless you're a, a crook. And you, that's what, right. But th that's what they're doing. They're conditioning you to just comply. Right. Well, you know, not complying a lot, especially for black people, is very dangerous. Yes, it's very dangerous. It's, it's unfortunate, it's just dangerous. And Cindy says, why not call the house first? Yeah, it's another good question. And, you know, um, I don't want to, and I'm not saying you're doing this, I don't want to blame the neighbor, because I think he did what he thought yeah. was the best. He's an older guy, you well, know. Well, it's like, yeah, if you saw my door open, it doesn't open, you, you know, you think. Well, I would call you, like, right. hey, you went right. there, what's really going right. on, right. you know, or whatever, but. At 2 o'clock in the morning, maybe he just felt like, okay, hey, something is wrong because he felt, he said well, that was out of order well, for her. And you got to remember, nowadays, neighbors don't even know each other. Now, I have a neighbor next door. We're not buddy-buddy, but if I saw the door open, I wouldn't go over there necessarily because I don't go over there now. Yeah. I would probably call. Oh, yeah, and, say something's yeah. odd. Something's yeah. wrong. Never in your wildest dreams, just like uh, Stephon Clark in uh, Sacramento, uh, the neighbor, whoever it was, called the police, saw somebody going mm -hmm. through the backyard. He said he would never ever call the police again mm -hmm. because he did not know that the police was going to go and murder and execute him. him. Oh, and by the way, uh, that young lady uh, noticed once again the body cam was heavily edited that they released to the news. Yeah. Thing. Why are they editing these body? The body camera shows you what happened. What do or do they? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. Why are you? Why are they editing it? Right. Before. They release it. Right. Just show it in its raw form. What's happening, our song? It says, how are you doing? We are doing well. Yeah, how doing about great. yourself? We're doing great. And Bernina, what's happening? You say, because they know they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. There is no outcry from us. We are too passive. We are too busy forgiving and not holding the police accountable for their actions. It is not beyond our, our capacity. capacity. Yeah, I mean, at some point in time, though, I mean, because, the, and to your point, they get away with it because... Mm -hmm. We hoop and we holler for a week or two, and then but, we go away into the next shooting. I have a I have a good question for uh, Ms., uh, for for Berdine. Um, the chief of police, the two top cops in that department are black. Yeah, for Fort Worth so, and Dallas. So what? How are they getting away with it? Well, I, I mean, you know, I I know how they're getting yeah. away. But what I'm saying is, though, we've got people in positions that can affect change, like Kamala Harris, who was in a position who could affect change, and yet they don't do it. Well, you figure, like, like to your point, they have uh, Fort Worth, mm -hmm. the uh, police department in question mm -hmm. now, and then Dallas, the one that was in right. the bottom. John, Which they have two, right next to each other. Um, mm -hmm. Chiefs of police that are black. Mm -hmm. You got to ask yourself, well, how did those black people get the job? Was it because they were sticking up for black people? Right. Hell no. Mm -hmm. They was well. We need, we what, what happened before the tape, tape started? We need to yeah. investigate. What's there right. investigate? This lady was in her house playing video games with her nephew, and she, she was, was murdered. murdered. Right. What do you need? What else you need to know? Yeah, um, I, I can only speak for myself. If uh, cops ever come to my door, I keep it locked, and then I ask them to get off my property if they want to talk to me. They can talk to me from the street. Right. That's what I do. Right. You know. So. And Sydney says, "Did he see the gun? It doesn't sound like you. Well, you know, of course, they're well, not gonna say well, he, he didn't see it. According to the edited tape, they even have a picture of the gun in the window, which to me looks like a toy gun." Yeah, but he didn't see the gun. I mean, how could he have yeah. seen the gun? Right. He, it sounds like he saw her. Said, uh, "Stop! Put your hands up or whatever," right. and immediately shot, shot her. Right. So I mean, he didn't have an opportunity to see nothing. And and, and if you go through the statistics, hey of, Reginald, if you go through the statistics of black people being executed in this country. They say at least 20% of the cases involve a gun that is never found or is alleged. Well, that's their go-to. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw a gun. Or I thought I saw a gun. Remember uh, right here in Riverside, Taisha Miller? Yeah, Taisha Miller. That was the infamous one out here. Wow. She, in her car. A gun was on her lap. They never found a gun. Right. 
20, what, 25 shots? Yeah. Into her 14 year old. In her car. Well, no, she was 18, 18 19, yeah. and she was sleeping in the car. Not far from the metro. Mm hmm. Not far. It wasn't far. Hey, William, you, and you agree. Yeah, you say, no, they don't have us. Okay? What's happening, Pam? She says, hello, Donovan. Hello. And Jamal, you say, we do not understand the power we have as a collective because we are so uh, culturally unaware that it creates ripples between the middle and upper class and lower class black communities. But times are changing, changing vastly. Absolutely. And, you know, um, as I always reference, um, like the reference Dr. Claude Anderson, and he says, you know, speaking of upper class blacks, if you will, a lot of times they suffer from uh, thinking they're exceptional. I, what, what's wrong with that? Shut up. What's wrong with that? Exceptional in that, oh, well, I, you know, I'm doing well, I'm eating good, or we're, you know, I'm driving cars. Shut up, Donovan. <laughs> I'm driving good cars. We live in a good neighborhood. Yes. We don't have the same problems those niggas over there have. Oh, and, and, and the exceptional blacks, too, I be the ones <laughs> talking down on everybody else. Ooh, they ghetto. Oh, they this, they that. Oh, you know, they just, this is one that, ooh, you guys. This is one that really just does it to me. And that is, that's why they think like that now. Because how they, um, um, how they acting over there, that's why white people don't like us now. And I'm like, you think white people don't like us because Boom Quisha and Ray Ray got on the news telling their side of the story the way they wanted to tell it? Do you think that's why white people don't like us? You fool. Right. Right. And I'm like, even still, why do you care if they like us or not? Oh, that's why they don't right. like us. So yeah. you go through your whole life, yeah, one trying validation. to get white people to like you. I, and it's like, it's, it's, but yeah, things are changing. I agree with you. And uh, you also say, uh, Jamal, they um, did it because they know they can. Who is going to stop it other than us, right? right. Now, let me ask you this, too. Maybe this, maybe mm -hmm. this, this might be a good question. Do you guys actually think that what they're doing is sending a message clear and cut, letting you know we will murder you at any time if you are talking on us and not going with our program? This is gonna what's gonna happen to you. We're gonna do it again and get away with it. I mean, I think that some of it. Um, I think to his point, and and someone else made the point. They know we're not gonna do nothing. What are we really gonna do? Mm -hmm. We're gonna cry, whine, get on Facebook, Make a rap social album. media. Yeah, you know, Sister, mothers of the movement. I'm not gonna let it go. That was ridiculous. Then we're not gonna do nothing. You know, we we are, and, and, and a lot of it is because we are in fear. You know, or we're waiting for somebody else to go out there. Like, right. there's a lot of people who hail Christopher Darner as a hero. Right. right. And the other brother um, in Dallas that you know took out some um, uh, police officers, they hail them as heroes, and it's because they did. What people who are sitting back wish they could do. I'm not yeah. saying you should go out and, you know, uh, and snipe police. That Please, that's not what I'm saying. Um, but a lot of people uh, see them as heroes because they're like, wow. They they, they, they took one for the team. They put their money where their mouth yeah, was. Yeah, they put their money where their mouth was. You know, of course, the, the, the reports came out that they was crazy and all kind of stuff. You know, but, and, and that's another thing. Why is it? Okay. And one second, for you guys that are on the watch parties, please come over to my page and I can read your comments from there. I can't read them for the watch parties for some right. reason. You know, why is it, everybody, why is it? And I, I just, you know, we have skits on Saturday Night Live, Dave Chappelle, you know, and we know what goes on. We know the playbook, and yet we still allow the playbook to be used against us. Right, well, again, I, just, I think a lot of it is because we are in fear and we're waiting for somebody else to do um, for us, you know, a lot of times we cry to politicians. Oh, you know, you guys need to do something. Oh, well, come on and tweet about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. what, what can she really do? She's one of them. We're going to overcome you know? them with our capacity to love. And then when they go low, we go high. And right. We're not going to go right. low. Disarm us. Yeah, they we just don't, keep no. No. us. No. See, and here's the funny thing about a person like yourself and myself. Um, people think I'm crazy. Well, you are. For the simple fact that I don't take no shit. Now, why is it that a person that makes a stand and lets you know how they stand, they're the problem? Because you're out of sync with the rest of the people in the box. Right. You right. got to do what the other people in the you box do. are doing. Mm -hmm. And y'all, you said we need the money we contribute uh, to paying police back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then if, you know, we as black people, we say, it said that we have $1.3 trillion. We give away 97% of it. Mm -hmm. So if we as black people would stop 
giving our money away to everybody else and hold it and actually make some major moves, we would have influence over the police department just like everybody else does. Well, unfortunately, we have those Negroes in our community that, uh, let's say they get out of debt or whatever, they immediately go right back into debt because they want to stunt and front and flash and, and cash. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That, that's what happens. Yeah. As soon as we, we get released, we say, you know what, even though... You know, I work as a uh, customer service person at Del Taco. I'm going to go get a Jaguar car. Yeah, you, you might not want to do that. But I live in an apartment. You, you might not want to do that. You know, that, that, that's what I'm saying. We give our wealth away. Even if we have it, we just say immediately, I'm going to go get this. Right. And we don't tell our children, no, 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 no. Get your nice little uh, Toyota Supra, you know, boat, mm -hmm. whatever so you can. And Sydney says, I left my door open and dispatch called me and told me the police were coming to make sure mm -hmm. you are safe. Well, thank God they warned mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that way you can crouch Absolutely. behind the couch. You know, God forbid they come in their blazing saddles. And Secret Garden, what's happening? He says, in a fairy tale police, uh, in a fairy tale, police protect and serve. In reality, police may kill you, and then that ain't a fairy tale. No, absolutely. That's what they're supposed to do, protect the service. Yeah. Written on all of the cards yeah. to protect and serve. But they don't see, do that, see, especially with black people. See, here's another thing I don't understand. Why is it that if I got in a, in a domestic uh, argument with you, and you pick up the phone and call 911, and it slams down, they immediately call that number back to see what's going on. And then and if you don't an answer, officer. yeah, then, and you got to do a lot of convincing yeah, them that, that hey, I'm happened. okay, yeah. no, I'm really not beating the kids. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not beating her, or everything's cool. Right. You know, it's, okay, there's thing, like you said, why, why didn't they call and say, hey, is everything okay over there? What's going right. on? Right. Hey, Huey, what's happening? Um, and you say, I just told my wife that shit about Walmart. So about the, the whole receipt thing. Yeah, I don't have to absolutely. show you my you don't, receipt. You don't have to. Now if, now, if you go to Sam's Club or uh, that other one that they have, yeah, that's in the agreement that you have to show your receipt because it's a club. Right. But Walmart, Walmart and all these other places, no. Right. Uh, Put it like this. Do you show a receipt when you leave your house with you, with your property? No, you no. don't need to because you know it's your property. Right. So once you pay for something, it's your property. You don't have to show anybody anything. Yeah, I mean, they have to have proof of you right. actually stealing, stealing something. It. Right. And Damien was having to say sellout. And then uh, Pale uh, Palesa, I hope I said that right, says they keep trying to bury us. They don't realize we are seized. Absolutely. Well, you know what? We need to start sprouting and actually you know, bearing fruit of the things that we've gone through almost 500 years in this country. We actually need to start showing what we are made of instead of waiting for somebody else's seeds to, you know, to sprout and do something. Well, <laughs> but, you know, and for us to do that, and I'm not saying everybody's doing that, but we need to stop signing off on the bullshit, you know, letting our kids. Okay, good example. You have an eight-year-old kid. He comes home with a bike. Mom! You know that boy didn't buy no, you didn't give him no money to buy a bike. He didn't find a bike. Remember that episode of Good Time? Right. And we gotta, we gotta start correcting this stuff so yeah. we can be the great and, people that we're supposed to be. And I hear that, but you know, I don't want people to think that that's correlating to police killing us because mm -hmm. it don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that has nothing No, 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 not at all. What I'm yeah. saying is about being great people and right. living up to those, you know, to, to that I got expectation. You. Got you. And Bernina says, Berdina, sorry, it says, yeah. um, it is their mindset. They are not working for the people. No, they, they weren't, weren't created to work for black people. Regina, I've said it, and i said it several times, I'm going to cut you off. It's something wrong in the training. It's when, it, when You know what? It's, it's nothing. It's, no, well, it's, no, no, we, no, we know the system. No, 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 it, it does, it does. The system itself, we know what the system is. It's like me being in the military. I know what my job is in the system. But in the training, they don't, treat, they don't train me to be afraid of the people I'm supposed to protect. Those people ain't afraid of us. That's a talking point that they use in order to justify murdering us. Oh, I was free. Because that's the one thing in a police. And I, I have never been a police officer. But Thank I God. know. Right. But I know that's one of the things that um, gets them off the hook. Is oh, my gosh, I right. was in fear of my life. You know, one of the things we stress about is making it home to our families at night. And, you know, I just saw something. I thought I was in danger. But and I took... I took, it was better them than me, so yes. it's not the training, it is that, the, okay. it can't be the training. No, it is, because put it like this, why would you want to be a police officer and you're deathly afraid of black people? Well, that, the point that I'm saying is, that's a lie. They are okay. not afraid of us. How in the hell so, are you afraid, let me finish, how are you afraid of somebody who don't even know you're outside? You're mm -hmm. lurking around this lady's mm -hmm. window, she has no idea you're there, so how could she, be, how could 
because you be in fear. She doesn't know you're out there. So that's what I'm saying. It's not training. It's that these black people are expendable. Nobody's going to bust I, a grape no, no, if we I, kill them. Oh, wait, let me finish. All we got to do is say, I'm a, I was in yes. fear, and the, and the top brass in the department are going to say, well, he was in fear, case right. closed. Oh, by the way, there was a gun in there. Yeah, no, I, I agree with what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, okay, like me being a uh, military person when I was overseas in the war, I wasn't afraid of the populace, even though there was people out there that could possibly kill me. What I'm saying is, I knew I had the, it, it's almost like uh, the Andy Griffith syndrome, that's what we would call it. People respect you in the community. And back in our day, we were growing up. You know, the officers that patrol, they were there a long time, whatever it is. They didn't need to uh, have military assault weapons to, to patrol the neighborhood because people knew who they were and they were in the community. Well, you do know why the Black Panthers came into existence yes. for the most part. Yeah. Why? It was because our police was Lieutenant, murdering. So, right. I mean, the police have always done those things right. to us. So, mm -hmm. if they were there, the police aren't afraid of us. It's just an excuse they use to murder us. Wholesale I'm going to stick away with by it. with my experience. We know, and you're wrong. No, there's something wrong in the training. And a lot of people that all I've right, talked let to, me get on we, all, we all say the same yeah, thing. Yeah, and y'all all wrong. I'm okay, just playing. Reginald says, <laughs> I will believe forever. I mean, I will. I believe we will forever forbid the two races from living together on terms of social and political e um, equality. Mm -hmm. And 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 in as much as they cannot live while they do remain together, there must be. Uh, let's see, there must be a position of superior and inferior, and as much as any other uh, man, am, I'm in favor of having the superior position assigned to the white race, Abraham Lincoln. No, mm. Nah, because what had happened was, yeah. remember, he wanted to free the slaves. No, he didn't. It wasn't, we know, but I'm saying, that's what most people believe, is that Abraham Lincoln was this honest no. Abe, and... He wanted to free black people, but we know the truth, right? And so, uh, hey, Vaughn, what's happening? Mm -hmm. um, and then Yah says, we have to be honest. Uh, we can be in position, but to keep the jobs, we feel like we can't be totally effective because they're in control somewhere. We have to admit, um, I think, that. that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Black police but showing out for the white cop. <laughs> right. But, you know, imagine if we created our own job. Like, we do have black businesses, but to the record numbers that everybody else does, we wouldn't have to worry about that as much, I would think, right? Hopefully not. So well, anyway. Um, r real quick, about creating jobs and stuff like that, I, I don't care where you go. We were just on the continent, the beautiful continent of Mother Africa. Mm -hmm. Jacob Zuma, uh, corruption trial has been moved forward. He has to go through the corruption oh, trial now. So what I'm saying is, People are the same everywhere. When it comes down to the money and the greed, we all are in the same boat when it comes down to that. We don't care about right. culture, community, nothing. It's about the money. Right. Hey, Al. He says, hey, Donovan D. Um, hey, Donovan. D and I had a discussion. The Texans have a player named Kiki County. Uh -huh. His real name is Key Von Tane. Yeah. <laughs> Your thoughts on his name? Save that for later. Did, did you see me just laugh? Start laughing. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> William says they use money as a weapon to divide us. Yes. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, especially in paying our leaders. Um, you guys, I tell you um, to research the Big Six. It was a, a group of six men in the '60s. Um, a couple of them that I can remember was, as I said, uh, Martin Luther King. John Lewis and uh, four other ones that uh, slipped my mind. The guy that did the Ur Urban League. Yeah, uh, and SNCC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those guys were paid by one point three million, sorry, back one point three mm -hmm. million dollars back in the day, which is a lot, a lot of money, money mm -hmm. to keep us docile. Mm -hmm. Hey, go back there and tell them that they, you know, keep fighting for civil rights, but right. don't let them get violent. Mm -hmm. Keep telling them to turn the or, other cheek. Or, or and this moving, was JFK yeah, or who keep, was doing this. Or keep moving the goalposts like they do now. It's like the right. Democrats right now. Oh, in three weeks, we're going to do... Why are you waiting for three weeks? Right. Do it now! Right. And Marcus, and also you guys, if you're watching in the watch parties, come on yes, over to this page over. and comment because I can't see the comments over there. And so Marcus says, also, how many cases go unreported and covered up? Because in my town, we have at least five unprovoked murders of a black males wow. that got covered up. Nice. It, it's, it's probably thousands. I would venture to say thousands of cases like that. Oh, well, I thought I feared for my life, all that other stuff. And so, 
you know, we get mad about it and we just go away. I mean, God, leaves. No, we don't go away. We just go on with our lives. Well, like, you, know, you know, and like all of us, all of us are targets, you guys. Everybody's a target. Yeah, it, it's almost like when I, when I watch some of these shows and uh, male or female, they'll say, well, there wasn't a daddy in my life. Why is it that our narrative, the father's not there? Do you see what I'm saying? And again, it's very implicit of that we should be there as fathers. But that's the narrative. Like, oh, well, you know, we're just deadbeats. We're just, you know. Well, we know that's not true. Yeah. Uh, and, and Yas says, yes, right. they are sending a message. No, absolutely. They're sending yeah. a message. You, the rest of you Negroes. Get in line. Yeah. Line you, up. You, don't you take a step off the plantation. There's going to be some problems. Right. Because me and Dee get in an argument all the time. I had to get her straight. Her. There are no such thing as good cops. Period. And I see, um, Reginald, you uh, posted your comment again. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Jamal, you say, uh, they are most definitely trying to show us that they still have all the power, yeah. but it's because they're getting scared of this big shift that's about to happen. You know what? Absolutely. Yes. they It's this um, awakening giant that they're afraid that's going to completely come to and say, oh, okay. This is what we need to do because we have been asleep for so long. You guys have just ran roughshod over black people for all these years. And now we have come to take back what's ours by any means necessary, right? Right. Um, remember what I said when the Amber Geiger uh, thing was done. Look it up on the videos and check it out. I said what's going to happen now is whenever a cop is involved in a shooting, they cannot rely on the jury system anymore. They are going to ask for a bench trial, which means... The judge that is in their pocket is going to make the decision. Right. And that's what's going to start happening. And you're going to see a lot of these guys get minute, if at all, penalty. Because I didn't want to ruin his life. Well, we're going to see. You know, so. Hey, Mark Charlie, what's happening? He says, a black woman was shot and killed by a white officer in her Fort Worth, Texas yes. home and um, after a neighbor call. Yes, that's actually what we're speaking of now. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, yes, that, that's what we're talking about, the case with a black woman. Um a Tatiana Jefferson, they call her Tay, that's mm -hmm. what they called her, um, was murdered in her home by a uh, Fort Worth police officer. And Marcus says, well, um, I will say it for everyone here. Until we start shooting back, nothing is going to change. Until we start shooting back, nothing is really um, going to change. You know, a lot of people who feel that way. Um, I saw some a couple of people say yesterday, well, the police officers have families. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's all I'm going to say about right. that. You know, right. but that you guys can draw your own conclusion from there. But they have said that they have fam they have families. Right. You know, and we and we've said on this show several times, you have a right to arm yourself, and you would be stupid not to have a, a, some kind of firearm in your home. Period. Right. Hey, Ron, you say we need another four hundred years before we collectively learn to take action. I hope not, because I know I ain't gonna. Yeah, be I'm not gonna be here, so. But when you're getting dead in, in heaven with that mansion and that Mercedes nah, in heaven. with my crown. With your crown. With my crown up in heaven. No. I want my crown now, not right. crown royal either. Yeah, because, I want my because, a lot of, because they're making their heaven right here. Right. And that's why I was asking earlier about the religion thing. White people, black people, following the same Bible, same God. For the most part, black people are Christians. Mm -hmm. White people are Christians. Mm -hmm. For the most part. what's do, What are they doing differently than we're doing? What? Well, what like what? Like they're using the Bible to gain and you know and do Influence. things and, and get what they need, but we're we, we, the the Bible has our hands tied. We're gonna wait, you know, we're gonna wait for God to do it, right. and, and they're using the Word of God to manipulate everybody else on the planet and you know make these great financial gains and a whole host of things. So, but a, a lot of you know, but, you know, we also got to blame ourselves too. I mean, like I said, I, I talk to young men right here. That have no prospects going for themselves, but they rather sit and do nothing than go and do something. Well, you know, but that's up to us. Yes. That's up to us to talk to them and try to help them. Yes. You know, but again, I don't want people to think one has anything to do with the they other. Don't. They, they don't. don't. You know, a man could be sitting on the corner twiddling his thumbs, as people used to say, and police still have no right but, to you know, bit, harm him. Right, but again, these millennials, uh, uh, well, go, go work this job. Am I going to be the vice president? I gotta start at the top. No, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> right. so. And Reginald says we should not vote unless these politicians are fighting for our interests only. 
Absolutely, I agree with you. But a lot, you know what, Reginald? A lot of people will be mad yes. at you then, for saying not to vote. Voting is a transaction. You have to get something for it. If you're not getting nothing for your transaction, why vote? Right. And why then Charlie says, "Stop it. calling the police and solve our own problem." Yeah. I mean, we. I think there's some things we shouldn't call the police for. But I mean, in the case of the, uh, James Smith, is his name, the neighbor that called the police. He thought his neighbor was in distress. Two o'clock in the morning, her doors open. And he was like, hey, let me just call the police to be on the safe side. He never called in thinking that she was going to be murdered. And so he said he regrets doing that. That's you right. Know? R. Kelly says, don't call the police. You're right. You know what? <laughs> R. Kelly said, that's right. Let's stop calling the no. police. Verdina says, yes and yes. We put blacks in those positions yeah. who are they working for. Protect and serve the community. That is what the police must be brought back in doing that task. As Dr. Claude Anderson uh, oops. Dr. Claude Anderson said, we do not have communities, correct? We have neighborhoods yeah. until we build up our strength in our neighborhood. And yes, he says that we don't have communities because communities work together, yeah, right. accomplishing goals, saving money, spending money within itself. We just have neighborhoods, which is somewhere you live. Right. So we don't operate like a community. So that's where he was yeah. going with and that, but absolutely correct. And, and everybody think about this. You are so busy working and slaving just to make it. When do you have time to really associate with your neighbor? Right. And um, Bardina uh, mm -hmm. says, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bardina says, yes, that right does not. Uh, <laughs> right with you. Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> and he says, yes, that does not make sense. And because uh, we're a little bit behind. And mm -hmm. Jamal says the process uh, to becoming a police officer should be more strict. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it should. You should have at least an associate degree to become a police officer. Well, and I th I, somehow these. But see, this is why I don't. This is just me. This is why I don't believe there's a, a, enough training for police officers uh, to do the right thing. You know why? Because it's it's based off of white supremacy anyway. Yeah. So, you know, they want those type of people in there who don't like black people, mm -hmm. who are going to stick it to black people and all that. So there's not it's not an issue of them getting more training. It's of them passing or not passing psychological evaluations. Those are the people they want in there. And said that, and we know that the police department is based upon, the, you know, the patty rolls and stuff from slavery. But it was also said that the uh, KKK was going to flat out infiltrate, infiltrate the police mm -hmm. department. And so what are they looking for? Right. People who are not KKK members? But, but also in the military. Uh, remember during um, the Iraq war here, those guys that were uh, in the prison and they, they uh, humiliated those guards and stuff. Where were those guards from? West Virginia. Some of your most fiercest, racist, hating, capable military people come from the South. Right. Our producer says the show is going great and can be better if y'all wouldn't cut each other off when the other one is talking. <laughs> <laughs> she talked. No, du duly noted. And uh, I hear he says, I think they have a subconscious fear of black youth. I agree with Donovan. They need a greater de-escalation training. Yeah. But let me ask you this, Huey. What? It, okay, let's take her her example. Uh, um, Tay's case, for example. What was to de-escalate? How could something be de-escalated if she didn't know something was escalated? Right. What What did he need to de-escalate? What did Botham John need to de-escalate? What did Philando Castillo need to de-escalate? Well, like what? What did well, all I, the? Let me finish. Like, what did all these people need to de-escalate? Um, and, and most of those times, they didn't even know that situation was escalated. So that's why I say I don't buy it's a training issue. No. You see, you're coming from the, 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 the side of the victim. What I, what, what I think he's saying is, what was the need for him to draw his gun? Period. De-escalate. He had no reason to draw but his gun. But nothing was escalated. That's the point that, that I'm making. But, no, he did escalate by drawing his gun. Right. But when, when, we say, when, when I'm thinking in terms of if something is escalated, it's... Yeah. You know, between the, two people. Yeah, between two no, people. That so what we're saying. What saying. That's what well, we're that saying. Training. That's not an escalation issue. No, it, in training, that's what it's called. As a cop, if I pull my gun, I, I'm escalating the level okay, of my but, interaction. But, okay, but this is my thing. Because...
police officers pulling their guns out unnecessarily is nothing new. This has been going on for, since forever. So if this was an issue of training, how come by now they haven't gotten the memo? Because nobody has said anything up until it hasn't been an issue. Are you serious? We were allowed to kill you. Nobody said Are anything. Are you serious? I'm very serious. I just gave you an example of the Black Panther why they was up and running. Yes. Because they wanted to and, protect themselves. And after, we eradicated, and after they eradicated them, nobody said anything. There's like a pro you we are, guys are making any we, sense. No, we are now identifying there's a problem not, in the training. It, okay, it, we're not going to agree on that. We're not. We're not. <laughs> and Huey says he wanted to save the union. Yes, that's what Abraham Lincoln wanted to do. And uh, Simba, what's happening, says, thanks, God. And our, our son says, okay, guys, there are many reasons why, uh, reasons, mm. many reasons we can come up with. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the fact that there are generally no consequences for killing us. And I am also thinking out loud. Uh, I said, I am also thinking out loud, wondering if this rule stops at cops. Wasn't George Zimmerman only self-proclaimed neighborhood watch? Yes, it's true. Or something. I mean, um, can you believe that? Uh, can you believe that those cops were who were black killers still have their supporters? It's sad, a sad situation. If we don't stop forgiving and think, uh, thanking God, thinking God will save us, we are screwed. No, absolutely. I mean, forgiveness for what? Forgiveness for what? Yeah, like you said, George Zimmerman, he was a neighborhood watcher. He got off on standing ground and he escalated. He did. The situation. He did. The, I mean, Trayvon had no idea what this dude was even doing as far as he was concerned. To, it was a, a, a rapist or a child to, uh, predator that was after him. To me, as a military person, I've looked at the, how these police are acting, and they are acting in a, a military-type training situation, which they should not be. They are a paramilitary organization to serve the community. So they should not be escalating in encounters with the citizenry. I mean, I get that they should not be doing it, but if you're telling me, you guys are telling me there's an issue of training. Yes. I mean, how long is this issue going to go on? If I know if I worked at Taco Bell and I got trained to put three scoops of cheese mm -hmm. in the tacos and I kept putting four, eventually I'm going to lose my job. Right. So how is it that a cop with a gun, and, you know, we keep saying it's an issue of training and they keep having these issues. How many more black people need to die before we stop blaming it on something yeah. like training and and instead realize that's just who they are maybe another million but what I'm saying is this as well as well Tamir Rice was shot within what eight seconds of the police yeah six seconds why did the police off you see what I'm saying uh, the guy that got shot in the car when he was reaching for his so let me ask you this how many white boys have you heard of the police running up on and within six seconds less than six seconds murdering him Right on the spot. How many white boys have you heard that happen to? Um, I think there's like eight of them, and they were parking tickets. But if they do a mass shooting, nah, we take them I'm, to Taco I'm, Bell. I'm, I'm, te and I'm, we... I'm telling you, right off yes. the top of your head, <laughs> eight. How many? Eight. Eight, eight really? Eight. That top of your head top that they head. just rolled off on yes. and just shot them up. Eight. Name one. Uh, his name is. Uh, I think his name was Mark Bazario or something like that up in up in Sacramento. No, true story. So anyway. The point that I was making it was a is that ticket. if it's a training issue, how come they're not killing everybody the way they're killing black people? Because these people are afraid of black people. That's oh, what it is. They don't Gardena. just come in there and say, I'm going <laughs> to go in there and just, you know, hey, let me go in there and, and murder black people. Bardina says, building strength in our neighborhoods to the point we um, will have strong community pull. Absolutely. Mm. And you also say, what do you feel is the solution? Well, um, again... I, I, my solution is always going to be the same. We need to start saving each other first in our households. If I haven't had the conversation with my daughter and those around me about group economics, self-love, knowledge of self, and all those things, I can't talk to everybody else. Oftentimes, as I say, we try to save the world, but we don't save each other. Now, what can somebody do as far as being in their own home and being murdered by the police? There's nothing they can do. But what we can do as a community is stop First, it's, I think it's going to start with the money. We need to start saving our money and spending our money with ourselves so we can have buying power. You guys remember the case in New York where the Asian cop shot the black uh, man in a, a dark hallway with no lights, and he just started firing in the hallway and murdered this man. They found him guilty, but he got off because the Asian community came together and put money into 
politics and the police department and the police, I think it was the commissioner or um, uh, Cindy, he helped me out with whoever it was, um, the commissioner or the prosecutor, he was black. And he said, in fact, we're not even going to um, recommend that he go to jail, even though he was found guilty of murdering this man. Right, remember that Korean grocery store lady that shot that girl back Latasha Harlins. Yeah, she didn't go to jail. She didn't go to jail. Her people rallied together. The um, Korean lady who shot Latasha Harlins back in the day shot, shot in her back over some orange juice. They rallied around her, and she's a free woman. So, you didn't serve one day. Um, so that to me would be one of the solutions, a couple of solutions, Bertina. And he always says, every 28 hours, an unarmed black man is killed by the police. So y'all still going to tell me that's training? Yes. Yes. And so, um, Jamal says, delete the comment before she sees it, Al. Okay? I didn't see it. Um, and um, Darren says, fear. And Charlie says, the big six includes labor organizer um, uh, Philip Randolph. Yes. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, do, 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 uh, James Farmer. James Farmer. He was the early uh -huh. leader. Uh, yeah. John Lewis. I knew that was one of them. John I I'm Lewis. I'm still hanging around. And the National Urb, Urban League's Whitney Young Jr. Yes, so you Whitney guys Young, look yes. that up. They were giving money to keep every... Those were the black leaders back then. Now, John Lewis, as we all know, he was Still in, you know, in Selma. And, you know, he's fighting for civil rights, but he's also taking money, you know, to keep everybody docile. So if that don't make you think, I don't know what does. And he, as you can see, um, some of the things that uh, he put up, some of those guys were in churches, leader of churches and, you know, mm -hmm. other organizations. So do the math. <laughs> um, and Alta, speaking of cops, question to you both. Who was your favorite TV cop? Me, Kojak. Adam 12. No, I didn't like Adam 12. I liked, uh, well, I like Quincy. He was, I know he was a, oh, a medical, say, that medical MD. Yeah, yeah he's uh, medical MD, but. No, no, TJ Hooker. That was my favorite. Anything with William Shatner. That was always my favorite. I didn't have one. And uh, you guys, again, if you're watching the watch parties, come on over to my page and comment so I can actually see the comments. And Marcus says, I personally believe it is ignorant for anyone to pray for anything that we're currently going through because those prayers were answered hundreds of years ago. We have just failed to use, uh, oops, we have just failed to use the tools that God put in place for us. It must never um, go unnoticed that we are currently the most powerful race um, of ourselves that have ever been. Yeah, we look like we're struggling in the 30s and the 40s instead of the year 2019 and beyond. Yeah, I, like I, that. I agree with you on that. We are the strongest people ever to walk planet Earth. It is a miracle that we've survived all the things here. that we've gone through. And so um, nothing's impossible. I will say that. And let's see, Jonelle, what's happening? Uh, Al says, my favorite song, 80s song, uh, Demetra K goes, the cat clock eyes. It's talking about my eyes look like that cat. Yeah, yeah. It's the cat. <laughs> Arsa says, about your class, your clash with Donovan. You mean my ass whooping with Donovan. I'll eat her lunch. <laughs> I'll eat her lunch. Um, and he says, about the cops training in fear, I will tell you what I tell many. Um, two people, this is this Negro again, can trying right to... at the same time. Uh, come, coming on here trying to call me and stuff, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, can be right at the same time. Uh, two people can be right at the same time as long as their reasoning um, makes sense. I think cops... Let's see. I think cops are not scared of us, but even if they, that were true, after all these years, their training would have somehow been adjusted. It did. They so, stopped chokeholding people. No, they haven't, actually. So basically, if not the Officially cops not as the individuals, then the system doesn't care about us, one or the other, maybe both. Right. Uh, again, I agree. I just feel like how many times we're going to adjust the training to you guys, to your point about the chokehold. Yeah. That's why Eric Garner's case right. was... Right, um, but he wasn't supposed to use that hole. It's illegal. I know. And they're still using it. I right. saw, uh, right. I can't remember, it was a video I saw not too long ago, a cop is trying to do a chokehold on somebody. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys keep talking about training. Is, is, is it really an issue of training? Well, if, no, it, it is an issue of training, and I'll tell you why. How do you train somebody to stop using something illegal? Here's the, here's the thing. It's, it's like the thin blue line. The thin blue line. You got these so-called good cops there. There's no such thing as a good cop until that good cop starts turning in these bad cops. I agree. And that's what it comes down to. There's a problem in the training. Yes. And Charlie, you, you reposted the big six. Guys, please look mm -hmm. it up. And Marcus says, honestly, um, do we really have problems that we can solve with, um, um, solve? Would a people that's going, with the people I think you're trying to say, that's going to continue to hate and seek to destroy us? Are we really 
Um, are, I think you meant to say, are we really having problems that we must leave behind or we're really having problems that we must leave behind? I'm trying to read that. Sorry about that. Um, and start to go where we are the majority and build amongst ourselves with our own. We don't consider the resources of Africa as our own. Windows, the um, same resources are supporting 75% of the world outside of Africa. And you know, we better hurry up and get over there because yeah. everybody else is going, going over, over there, there taking over. The thing. Exactly. Uh, like I said, okay, we got $1.3 trillion here. How far can $1.3 trillion go in Africa? Demetra? Far. Very far. It could go really far. And a lot of people are going back to Africa. Like, you know what? Ghana, they're going to... We out places. of here. That's what I'm saying. So if you're making, let's say, $30,000, do you know how far $30,000 goes in Africa? You live like Depending a king. Depending on where you're at. You live yeah. like a king. Yeah, you can do really well. A queen. Right. And Al says, escalate means increase rapidly. So, <clears throat> to that point, I mean... Pulling your gun is escalating. I, I know. In a training scenario. <laughs> For, I mean, for it, any it, of these it, officers it, it, to, it, to go for their guns but that, immediately but, 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 on the but scene. You, I, even if. You're not going to convince me that's a training issue. If everybody's doing it. How many times do I got to tell? But it is, I, I don't think it's an issue of training. I think it's an issue of them being allowed to do those things. If every cop arrives on the scene and starts pulling their gun, it is a training issue. They're trained to do that. But if, if you're not supposed to do that, then is it an issue of training or are you just being hard-headed and you will have it's your issue blood of training. thirsty? It's just like marching. Jonelle left, says, right, left, Okay, right. so this is what Jonelle says. It's an issue of them um, liking um, blacks, uh, issue of them liking black skin, they could have knocked on the door that was open. They could have called for anybody in the house instead of sneaking around the house and shooting right. her through exactly. the window. Uh, sh let's see, shooting her through the window as they're giving commands. It's a black skin issue. Why isn't black mm -hmm. cops having these issues? We need a state of separation or those biased white with badges and others without will continue their way of niggering, a uh, nigger hunting, a.k.a. policing. And, uh, and that's what I'm saying. To Jonelle's point, why aren't the black cops having those issues overall? They are. They just, uh, they just convicted a Negro in Illinois not and gave the woman $21 to, million. Dollars. Not to the point that white cops are doing it. Just the same scenario of why aren't white boys and white men being murdered the way black men and, and now black women are being murdered by police how come there is not an issue everywhere why is it just you know between okay. certain people okay I, it's obvious you, you you you've taken the yellow the small yellow bus on the way to school hey jay <laughs> no real quick what is the demographic of most police departments in the united states as far as race race i, I would venture to say white 80 almost 88 okay. percent of it is white there's your issue Right there. So then it's not an issue of training. It is an issue of training because I can take somebody who's all, I take an all white platoon and train them to do a certain thing. So if, if the police ain't department. You ain't going to tell. I'll just so, say this. So if the police department me. has all these recruits there, a majority of them are white, whatever the deal is. Okay, so it's obvious that there's a plan that why, why are, is this unit all mostly white, but yet they're going to be patrolling a multi-racial neighborhood that makes no sense in itself but again you should not escalate and uh eight six seconds put on the scene and then you're putting bullets in a six-year-old kid or eight-year-old kid that makes no sense but they're not doing that to white people though but anyway shay says simple y'all says they are not afraid it is intentional i agree that's what it is. That's not training. They're just not afraid. I, I'm not saying it. it's not intentional, but what I'm saying is there's something wrong in the training man. I'm not saying that it's not intentional. I could be a, a supremacist, go through it like in the military, and I've seen guys do some horrific stuff when I was overseas. That was not how we were trained. Right. And so Archer says, I think Donovan has some stats ready. And then oh. uh, Shay says, yes, that is true. Yes. I don't even know what you mm -hmm. guys are talking about anymore, but I will... Um, Read them anyway. And Charlie says, uh, replying to Al, de-escalate. Yes. Archer says, I always love Colombo. <laughs> and Marcus says, yes, you can kill the Dr. King bullshit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and till there is any fact, until there's any facts to substantiate those comments, please, please, please bury the bullshit. Show me the video. Show me the documents. Show me something. 
But don't give me bullshit that you heard over time. Okay, Marcus. I know how you feel about Martin Luther King. <laughs> and a lot of Martin people Luther feel the King. same. Martin Luther King. King. But listen, brother. That whole big six thing is researchable. It's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah, they were all paid. It's like it's a fact with Martin Luther King and Mar Margaret Sanger. She was the one of the originators of the eugenics program, Planned Parenthood. She said 30 years before he was even on the scene, we need to find Fine. a black pastor mm -hmm. that's influential in the black community to get him mm -hmm. to sell our talking points of eugenics. 30 years later, she gave him an award and he said via Coretta Scott King that he will always consider this his most prized possession. So you tell me if that's bullshit about Martin Luther King. Listen, I'm not saying he didn't do some great things. It is a fact that toward the end of his life, he knew he made very big mistakes in the way he was steering black people. And look where we're at. Look where we're at. But he did some things to harm us as well. It's just a fact. That's not like I don't ha have a reason to hate Martin Luther King. I think he did some great things. Mm -hmm. But as far as saying that he was above board, he was a deity, he was not. He just wasn't. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry that you are offended by the well, facts about Martin Luther King, but that's just the truth. Yeah, I remember in South Africa when I was telling the girls how, uh, we were at the brewery and I was telling them how um, you don't see like too many statues of Martin Luther mm -hmm. King anymore and stuff like here in the United States. Because, yeah. you know, we don't edify, you know, he wasn't the only one in the struggle and stuff like that. Uh, and they were like appalled, like, oh, you're never going to get rid of Nelson Mandela. But right, Nelson Man Mandela Mandela's everywhere. Uh -huh. also is right. the same thing as what Martin Luther King did. There was a deal done right. somewhere down the line that said, we will let you out of prison. Something happened. Yeah, something went down. And Chris, what's happening? Let's see. Let me make sure I make a comment. Chris, she says the, uh, the KK cops mm -hmm. are the problem and not the training. I agree. But that's in everything, and that's like, what I'm saying. I, well, let me finish these comments because yeah. we way behind it. And Bernina says, Kojak, and Al says, Donovan is right because the military police, police, I think he meant, mm -hmm. is very meticulous on their training. Yeah. Um, Alicia's mom is a sheriff deputy for 17 years, and she said the police station training is sore, short. short and weak and needs definite improvement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to that point, if it needs, if I mean, Every training that you go through is going to improve or at some point needs improvement. But how much training do you need to have to not shoot into somebody's house and kill them and they don't know why you're there or even that you're there? Like, how much training does it take? How much training does it take for you to know that a chokehold is illegal and you keep doing it? It takes... Is it an issue of training or is, you just, or is it allowed and you keep getting away with no, it? No, I don't think it's that. Okay, it, it's an issue of training. It is an issue of training. And I'm going to say this. When you train a, a paramilitary force to be military, look military, and use military equipment, that is a training issue in itself. Right. Then, while you're in the organization and they say, no matter what you do, we're going to protect you and we're going to do this and we're going to do that to you, it gives you a license to kill. Right. And Shay says, y'all all lost the plot. That's why they kill us 100%. Can you ex uh, expound upon that? I know we're behind a little mm -hmm. bit, so I'm going to catch up here. And Al says, Alicia's mom has a friend who is a police boot camp trainer, and her friend said the requirements are low, and the powers above have said each class must have a certain percentage of graduates. Right. Right, okay. But do you still have ongoing training? Or think okay, about let me, let me let me just finish these. Yeah. Let me just finish these. Okay, and so, uh, and John says, five reasons to, okay. Mm -hmm. Yah says, um, it, if it's intentional, then training isn't going to change it. They want to do it. Right. Uh, we, we, so let me get these comments real quick. You know, let me just a quick thing. Uh, when, when, when you go behind the training, there's psychological things. They can weed these racists out just based on the psycholo the, the, psycho the, the psychology background. They can, but they don't. Exactly. Okay. Um, so Charlie says, it is not the training. It's the skin color. See, it's a black person. It's shoot and kill. Mm -hmm. Donald... Your brother says military training uh, through repetition breeds true professional soldiers and Marines such as rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Archer says, Donovan, we escalate, quote unquote, an issue when a situation compels us to. Right. Escalating under any other circumstances is practically plotting to kill um, yeah. if you ask Absolutely. me. And Marcus says, well, next week, let's have the Martin Luther King episode <laughs> and show the proof, the show, the video, and the documents. Let's. Uh, do research and verify what you're claiming about the doctor because I ain't, oops, I ain't, oops, 
I ain't buying it. And the funny thing is the people that probably wrote all the same people in the situation we wouldn't even trust. Well, mm. Marcus, the information is there. Because even if I brought it to you, would you believe it? Unless you saw it for yourself. Is there? I, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't have a dog in a fight. I'm not getting paid to say anything mm. um, unfavorable about Martin Luther King. I mean, it's just a stuff. It's a fact. So, um, <laughs> Jornel says the issue is to state the uh, is state to state mm -hmm. the high ranking um, officer uh, trained in Israel. Mm -hmm. You have mainly um, biased whites policing black communities mm -hmm. to mainly kill black youth. The state is uh, the stats is evident. Listen to, um, oops, listen to the honorable uh, Mr. Farrakhan warning us via justifiable homicide. Yes, mm -hmm. um, it's not con uh, coincidence. It's murdering and culling of us via biased white officers, state to state. We need to either patrol and police our own, defend ourselves, and separate. Absolutely. And that's what a lot of people say the issue is we need to police our own. And, uh, hey, Gina, what's happening? And Jonelle says, look up police being trained in foreign country, mainly Israel. That's what Donovan's point is. Okay, and then um, here you say it's a fact. All right, so I got to all of the comments. Okay, so do you want to expound upon... This bull cock of training you were saying? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just what he said. You've got to look it up for yourself and kind of see. It's, and, and, and I don't know if you, you went through the thing, but there's a psychological background that they go through. Like mm -hmm. you said, they know what they're doing. I can't, if this racist guy gets through, he's going to shoot and kill no matter what. 88% of your uh, police departments are white. So obviously they have an agenda from this slave era. Obviously that's it. But the thing is, there is a problem in the training. Listen, I'm not saying there's not a... I'm sure there's a problem. Why they won't fix it, I don't. I'm sure there's well, I know problems why. in the training, but I am not going to bet the farm that is the training. That's Alone. why they're killing black people no, wholesale. No, that, that is not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that there, there's a problem with integrity within, which is part of the training, the integrity within these police departments, and the uh, justice within these police departments. Like I said, there's no such thing as a good cop if... They know that they're planting drugs and sprinkling drugs on suspects and dead suspects, and these good cops will not, not cross the line. Just like the Trump administration right now, where you've got uh, longtime government officials, that State Department officials that know what's going on, and now when the, the floodgates about to come, now they want to come out and say something. Where were you in the very beginning? Where's your integrity in the very beginning? That's the problem. Right. When you don't have integrity. And... Uh... Uh, Marcus says, I'm just saying, show it if it's there. Well, I can't show it to you right now, but you have, you, well, how about you, just like Charles, uh, Ch um, Charles did, he, um, Charlie, he Googled it, and he found it. it There's a plethora of information there. I mean, it's not a secret. It's only a secret because, you know why it's a secret, Marcus? Because the white man ain't told us about it. No, it's a secret because it's in a book. Well, because black people say it. And it's like, oh, no, you niggas are lying. Yeah. But if white people put it out there, then it's got to be true, right? I mean, why do we have a hard time believing that Martin Luther King took a little cash on the he side? Did. How did his family become so enriched? I mean, why is that hard to believe? How did he support himself all those years? You know, going from Selma to this it place was a total to that of place? $1.3, I think, $6 million between all of them. Mm -hmm. They got a payout to go... Um, to go keep black people docile. It's a fact. Every campaign, you got to have financing. We can't go to war unless somebody's going to uh, finance it. Right now, they move troops to Saudi Arabia. What, what did uh, Trump just say? Oh, Saudi Arabia's going to pay for it. Everything costs money. Right. Jonelle says, look at who cut their check. It's not the public. It's the banks. Right. And then um, Chris, she said, we need our own. Al, absolutely, always. And then Martha says, so... It would be safe to say that the most well-organized group of black people, such as the Nation of Islam, must be on a higher payroll because to be that well-organized and that uh, unaffected across the United States and global now speaks volumes. Well, no, I mean, no shade, Marcus, I love you to death, but that comment don't even make sense. And I get where you're going with that. You, you feel like because your beloved Martin Luther King... Um, was not perfect, now you want to attack the Nation of Islam, but what you're saying is categorically false. We know that the Nation of Islam has been effective, not just because some Negroes choose not to listen to the Nation of Islam does not mean that the people within the Nation of Islam has not been served. People of the uh, Nation of Islam got schools, jobs, 
you know, businesses. Um, businesses, a whole host of programs and things. They are self-sufficient. Copyright. They, they, they got their own newspaper that's been around forever. Okay, how many name name me um some black newspapers that's been around as long as the um nation is not Muhammad speaks the final call. Name name me a, 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 a newspaper that does that. A black newspaper that's done that. There are none name anymore. me a black newspaper or publication that has not sold out to white supremacy like Jet Ebony. And mm -hmm. all of the other Essence. magazines. So oh, when you give a backhanded comment like that, with no, see, I can back up what I say. I'm not one of those people that's gonna say something and then just be like, oh well, let I, it's you know, I, cause I said it. No, I'm gonna back be able to back up what I said. And so again, I just want to put out there that your statement about the Nation of Islam is false. But you know what? I'll let Jonelle get you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you though. And Al says, uh, Mike Greenberger, ESPN, caught some heat a few years back. When he said Martin Luther King, in a way he was yeah. right, yes or no? Well, well I, I don't want to take it that far. Yeah, well, he he was wrong in the aspect that he shouldn't be the one that that said it, and and to spread that on. And a he's platform. not the first time that right. some uh, uh, a news anchor has been on um, film right. saying that. So that's just what they call Martin Luther King. I don't call him that. Do you, I, I wouldn't I, I, like. I wouldn't say he was a coon. I think Martin Luther King. I won't say he, that. he did what he thought was best at the time. Yeah, he made he admitted that he made a mistake mm -hmm. by leading black people to turning the other yeah, cheek. Stokely and Carmichael, out. all the younger cats started calling him out, and he was like, "Yeah, I, this is not the way to go. We've been doing this for fifteen years, and we yeah. have to progress." Right. You know what happened to him when he went to Washington and talking about he was going to ask for a reparations check? What happened to him? Uh, right. So, and then Al, um, Al, you also say, so tell me everything ra is racial to black people. And I don't think everything is racial to black people, but I think it's a lie to say, oh, well, you know, everything is fine. I mean, I know probably 80% of my day, um, I'm being looked at in a racist manner mm -hmm. by somebody, that, that no matter what it is. And so I want to say everything is racial, but uh, when you're black in America, your race comes first when it comes yes, to everybody see, else. That's see, yeah, see race first. Right, so we we just need to uh, um, understand no, okay. that and deal with that. And uh, Marcus just says, I wouldn't give a damn who put it out there. <laughs> and what wealth does his family control? His wife lived a modest life years after his passing. I hate to get off the point of the police um, killing um, us, but um, we need to put the rest there, um, tearing down the past when we're not doing shit about the present. Uh, see, listen, this is the other thing too. We as black, see y'all, y'all, y'all who thump the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that to be disrespectful, but you guys who continuously talk about God and the Bible, y'all don't read it. It says, my people were destroyed for lack their lack of knowledge. of knowledge and their rejection of truth. So when the knowledge is out there, we don't want nothing to do with it. Because we reject it and then we cry and whine about the state of our, um, um, the, the state that we're in. So is it the truth or is it tearing down? Or is it tearing down or is it the truth? I mean, you tell me, just because somebody is speaking the truth doesn't necessarily mean that we're tearing it down. How else are we supposed to progress if we can't become one with the truth? It's just a fact, Marcus. Nobody's tearing Martin Luther King down. It's just a fact. Um, so you also say, go um, ahead. The, the girl that got killed, her family would would want her to be forgiven, the officers to be forgiven, and all that other. I shall sure hope not. <laughs> so, <laughs> Marcus says, but outside of what they do for themselves personally, how effective have they been in changing the global direction of black people across the U.S. and the world? Well, I know for a fact, my father being one of them who turned down a four-year scholarship to Pepperdine University full ride. Instead of going to uh, Pepperdine, he joined the Nation of Islam, and he said it's because of the Nation of Islam that he is a better person. He does he uh, he, he said that they taught him about himself something that a white university was not going to do. They weren't going to teach him knowledge of self. And my I'm dad, just going to HBCU. right? <laughs> and my dad also worked for Ferrari back in the day and quit when the white man wanted to cheat him out of his check, and he ain't worked for another man since. And my dad is 75 years old. Still working on cars. So I can tell you personally what I know that they've done. 
that's just my testimony. Um, and let's see here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, Al says, is the Chicago Defender a black-owned newspaper? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I have to look that up. I'm not for sure. Because I know the Tribune got bought out. And uh, I I'll look it up. And Jonelle, you said, we understand what you're saying, Queen. They select the biased, ill-minded white officers who desire to be the pawns of the Zionists like mm -hmm. Amber Geiger and the officers shooting black people. people. Absolutely. Those are the type of people who get past the psychological exams right. and, oh, it's okay, you didn't do so well on the train. Those are sure. the people they want. They, want, they yeah. want the people to go in there and be judgmental and um, escalated, if you will, in the black community. Mm -hmm. They go in the black community and they pump fear into black people just by their presence alone. Mm -hmm. Why is it that black people in America, especially black men, fear going out and coming home at night, uh, coming back home? I don't. Are, are, are you, you probably don't, but I know there's a lot of black men who do, who fear, is, is today going to be the mm -hmm. day? And fear that if a white police officer especially pulls them over, am I going to make it out of this situation alive? They am going to jail because before it was like, well, damn, I don't go to jail. But now it's like, I hope I don't die, right? And so, um, uh, uh, Marcus says, and I would even say this currently, the most powerful black person in our existence is still Barack Obama. Okay, I'm gonna let me finish reading the rest of your comment. Why don't we give his black ass the heat for not stepping up and standing up as the president uh, um, after his presidency? Well, I don't know necessarily where you've been, um, but we always give Barack Obama heat. And I, I know I did. Bar okay, I ask you this: Who is Barack Obama influential to? More white millionaires and, doubled under the Obama administration. Right. And to be influential, he's, doesn't he in some way have to uh, influence us to do something, to say? Like, what has he influenced us to do other than to vote for him two times and we've come up empty-handed both times? And so when you say that people don't take Barack Obama to task, that's a lie. We take Barack Obama to task all the time. All the time. But Barack Obama, he's influential. He's done. He's in, he got his. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he, he, Barack Obama, is, I mean, I don't know necessarily what he's doing now, but we don't hear. He's chilling. We don't hear him, you know, speaking up for the things that go on in the black community. Hell, you would think he would. He was the first black president, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, I don't, I don't know where you've been, Marcus, but we do do that. We do take President Barack Obama to task. I mean, I know he's gotten some Netflix stuff, you mm -hmm. know, him and Michelle Obama, um, somebody said to me the other day that they would, would they want to, they want Michelle Obama to run for the presidency of the United <laughs> States, and I asked them why. <laughs> I asked them why, and they really couldn't say why. And I said, "You mean the Michelle Obama who has been um, silent. silent when it comes to black issues after she's left um, the White House? You mean that um, Michelle Obama, the Michelle Obama that has denounced?" Uh, Mr. Louis Farcon and Jeremiah Wright, the man who married them, and they sat up under his church mm -hmm. for 20 years. You mean that, Michelle Obama? Um, why, why would she be a good president, especially for black people? Right. Um, and then now that this uh, second shooting has taken place, how many of the Hispanic Congressional Caucus have come out and spoke at what an uh, outrage and a tragedy that has just taken place? How many of the, Zy uh, the Jewish community come out and said, oh my gosh, we've got to go to our brothers and sisters over there and and support them well why would they because they know forgiveness is coming right away there we go they're gonna forgive us right away just there wait for it like i said and then when people get on us or me especially because i'm not concerned about kids in cages on the border i'm not concerned about a wall being made this is why i get it i have to take care of my own you take care of your own right jonelle says we're not talking we're doing the works are okay here we go <laughs> here we go here we go we're not talking. We're doing. The works of the nation is clearly evident. Our schools, farms, businesses, being, um, et, et cetera. It is as it is as it always been for the service of our people. Clearly, as the Honorable Elijah, uh, oops, Elijah Muhammad teaches, all we have to do is put up a clean glass next to a dirty glass. How can you say the nation has? had no effect on black people when it's black people in the nation, in, inside and out, supporting the nation. Hmm. Mark, is he talking to you? <laughs> but 
But hey, it is really good that we have these discussions. This, this is stuff we got to talk about because without communication, there is no understanding. Right. I mean, I know a whole host of people been helped by the Nation of Islam. I mean, I told what to hear that, oh, Nation of Islam has just been up there for all these years and, you know, it's been doing nothing. That, that's a farce. Well, since we're talking about the Nation of Islam real quick, I've got a quick story to say. Because of the Nation of Islam, guess what I did today? What did you do? I defended a sister uh, that yes. was tell, in tell distress. Us, tell us about your story. Yes. There was a, girl, a lady. I walk into the AMPM, which I'm going to get some gas. And there's a big line, and you know, she and the sister's just going off. Blah, 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 blah. You know, like, you know, I'm thinking, oh, Lord, here we go. And that's sister, loudmouth sister, just going off for no reason. So I'm sitting in the line, blah, blah, blah. And a Hispanic lady comes in and tries to cut the line. And like, oh, I, I'm going to get my gas. I got to go. We're all in a rush to get, 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 you know, to go. So the black girl tells him, wait a minute, you know, you, you got to deal with me first. You don't cut me off. And remember I've been saying that, yeah. how they make it seem like we don't exist. They just... Right. Just step right over us and stuff like that. We've got to stand up and let them know we exist. We're here. We're people. We're human beings. Get your ass in the line, lady. So the sister is, you know, telling the girl, get in the line. And, you know, and the, you know, the, of course, it was a Hispanic cash, uh, cashier. And she was like, it's okay with her. She's going to take care of her people. Hmm, group economics. Wow. Isn't that, <laughs> how, how, funny how that works. And so the lady makes a fuss, you know, like, no, you got to deal with me. So the lady's like upset and she gets in the line and then she starts talking shit in Spanish. The sister breaks out full Espanol, y'all. <laughs> I'm talking about you know, the whole thing. And I'm thinking, oh my God, it's about to it's about to jump down right now, you know? And so the Hispanic lady's talking shit, whatever, and you know, I had to tell her like, you know, she's like looking at us, the people in the line, like, you know, hey, look at this lady, you know, she's no, we're like, no, you're in the wrong, man. This is America. We do things a little bit different here, and an ass whooping isn't worth <laughs> getting some gas to get your ass whooped because you're in a rush. You know what I mean? We're all in a rush. And so I was like with the sister. I was like, no, you're right. She's wrong. This is how we're going to handle it, blah, 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 blah. And then so we waited for a quick minute. Then the Hispanic chick's man or whatever comes in. Now again, you guys, I'm you know I I'm sorry if this sounds racist or whatever. I have no reason to be afraid of a Hispanic person because I live near them, so I'm not afraid of a Hispanic person, especially when they're five six and built like a keg. Okay, I was gonna handle this guy. Okay, so um, he kept he kept mean mugging me and stuff, and I kept mean mugging him back. You know, it's like really, are we gonna do this? But I felt proud of myself because I wasn't going to let this sister be disrespected because, again, I've said this and I say it all the time. we got to protect this black woman if we want respect for ourselves. It's that's right. That. It's as simple as that. Big and, ups. And that's something that the nation does teach. Big ups. There you go, Marcus. And Al says, oh, God damn, y'all have got, um, y'all got big baby. <laughs> started. That's what he called me. Uh, started. <laughs> I told y'all m- a month ago. <laughs> One of the number one rules of the Demetri K show is not to ever say anything bad about the minister, minister of the nation yes, of Islam. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, and Marcus says, "I'm not saying you and Donovan personally. No, no, I'm no. saying we must preach the uh, preach the conversation as the masses. We must make him uncomfortable in existence among us as um as a people. Who is him? Who, who is him uncomfortable? If I'm not mistaken, I don't I don't hear me." And uh, Bernina says, this is the joke. Barack is among the missing. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess if I drank milk, maybe I saw he, I would see his, you know, missing thing on the back of a milk carton. But hey, yeah, hey, he's missing in action hey, big time. Like a lot of baby boomers, he got his and he's taking that ladder and said, I'm out. I'm pulling it up. Good luck to y'all. Right. <laughs> Did they go low or high? I think they went high. They went high, <laughs> they went okay. High. Uh, Jonell says, what does Barack Obama influence us to do but be better tools of white sovereignty? Mm-hmm. Where is the liberated state of mind? All Obama is doing and has done is within the regulation of yes, white sovereignty. Um, what is Obama and his Obama led um, us to? Uh, hmm, we need a true, full, and complete freedom. I mean, Donovan says it the, um, the, all the time. More white millionaires were created under the Obama Double. administration. So while we were losing our homes and our wealth, the white people doubled. The millionaires doubled. And I'm not saying it was because of Barack Obama, but police brutality amongst black people grew, grew as well. As well, and racism within the United States. Right, and we know why the yeah. racism grew because you know he wasn't a black president. Mm-hmm. But 
those are just some things to think about, you know. Um, and then Marcus says, would it not be fair to say that America's well-organized machine that is currently unstoppable until the world ends with saying that why are we not pushing to leave instead of staying? Instead, instead of staying, I'm trying to see the rest of your comment, um, and continuing to suffer because the haters around us are currently leaving to go where we may go one day to prepare to control our asses once we get there too. No, that's exactly what's going on. That's exactly what's going on. Yeah, it, 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 it's kind of like you know where you live right now. In every United States, there's a housing issue, right? So everybody's leaving the concrete jungle and they're coming out here to get you know cheaper homes that they can afford to live in. It's the same thing globally. Right. So, I mean, you, you know, you, you can't escape it. But the point is, though, like everybody else, we got to be smart. Let's get over there and get that money while, you know, get over there and right. get that land while we can, while it's cheap. Yeah. Because by the time we get over there, it's going to be gentrified out. We can't afford it. Yeah, and it's, it's on its way. I mean, we saw it uh, firsthand. First and uh, yeah. I said, Donovan, I defended the sister in the mall, too. Said she was having some difficulties. I think because she was mm -hmm. in line or something like that. Um, and as a, um, a white man behind her, just kind of watching her, and you know, Al said he went and he helped her, like, dude, yeah. you know, yeah. like, yeah, he probably didn't think nothing of it. Oh yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, you know, but that was one of the one times, and I was impressed with the sister when she broke out that Espanol. I was like, oh, like, don't, get it, girl, get, get it. it. Did you get a number? Nah, she, didn't, she didn't have no backside. P plenty of this, but not, you know. Well, anyway. Reggie says, uh, "Why are we keep calling ourselves black? We are African from abroad." Abroad, well, yeah, we know. Well, yeah, uh, black we is an know. adjective, so yeah, it's, 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 it's like when we say white man. When, when you say a white man, you're just saying something in, incidental in general, about yeah. him. But right. he'll say, I'm an Italian white man or right. I'm a German white man. So right. when we say we're black, a lot of us don't know where we're from in Africa. Mexicans call themselves brown. Right, you know, it's just an adjective. Yeah. Um, and then Charlie says, Louis Farrakhan took Obama's uh, task. Yep. He said what... Sure um, what did Obama do for you? Nothing. Obama fought for everyone, even gay rights. Yep, but Obama sure did, did nothing for black America. Not even one black appointment to the Supreme Court judges. Yep. Yeah, he appointed a, a lot of women. and a, a White men uh -huh. and Hispanic women and stuff. He does, right. I mean, but you got to remember, Obama was put there for a certain reason. Yeah, I mean. And it, it wasn't for black people. Right. That's for damn sure. And we know that him and Obama... Um, were friends or mm -hmm. friendly, if you will, mm -hmm. um, lived not too far from each other. They met several times, and all of a sudden, you know, when he got up there, he was like, <clears throat> "Gotta play the game." Who? Yes. Gotta play the game. And then, you know, if Arkan said it too, he said, "I had this picture of um, Obama and I for a long time. Yeah, I when just he was chose young, not to out. Yeah. Yes, I just chose not to release it because he said Obama came to him and said, "Hey, you know, you can you keep it on the QT, right. quiet tip, exactly. you know," and he did. But, you know, since he wanted to get up there and act and brand new, he was like, bow, here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I said, uh, you know, politics makes strange bedfellows. They right. really do. And Reginald says, we need to be racist because racism benefited other races of people that has oppressed us. And Reginald, that's what I was asking about as far as religion. What are white people that are Christians that are reading the Bible doing differently than we are doing? I am for group economics, which is a form of racism. I want to... Uh, do what they're doing, all these other groups. I want to pool my money with my own people. <laughs> yeah, crazy. You talking about <laughs> warning Donovan has added a feature to the Demetri K show that if anyone talks <laughs> bad about the minister in the nation, there is a bitch. You're going to uh, get deleted button <laughs> starting next week. No, we never do that. Uh, everybody's allowed to speak their mind yes, here. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Marcus says, well, I, I will say we can agree to disagree, which is probably mm -hmm. best considering that we can't do Nothing about the past. We can only do, do something, something about, about the present. Absolutely. Well, you know, Marcus, the reason I was bringing the, um, him up along with the, uh, the big six and the rest of the big six is that a lot of times, because uh, somebody else brought up about how um, they get money, and that's how I ended up bringing it up. They get money, and a lot, a lot of times the check is bigger than the mission. You know? Hey, you know, these Negroes ain't going to listen. No, I mean, I'm not saying it's right, but if I like, I like to play devil's advocate a lot. Yeah, we know. So if... JFK and them would offer me a portion of $1.3 million back in the 60s, which is a lot of money. I would probably say to myself, you know what? These Negroes ain't really. Y'all ain't really wanted some water. Well, he, white people. Well, here's the thing. Modern day, right now, John Lewis. Been in Congress a very long time. What's his legislative accomplishments? This guy was a civil rights leader. He has put out legislation for the people in the cages. He's put out legislation for the LGBTQs. He's put out legislation to make statues of his civil rights friends. But in the neighborhood of Georgia where he comes from, 
And that district looks like shit. Just like the other cat that got called out by Trump. Uh, uh, Elijah Cummings. Elijah Cummings. And Marcus says, all you have said is my point to Obama. We must start preaching that his current attitude is bullshit. Yeah, it is. No, no we do. We, 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 do. Yeah, we absolutely do, Marcus. Oh, we totally agree with I you. I am not totally. an Obama supporter. I'm not going to bash him, but I'm not a supporter. Right. We're going to tell the truth. Yeah, it ain't truth. tearing down. It's the right. truth. Jonel says, Muhammad Ali changed his name and so many others due to the nation. And so did many others due to the nation. You know Malcolm X, Farrakhan, the Panthers, and the majority of so-called people and organizations because of their uh, honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, Where I get the book out there. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, Elijah Muhammad. Muhammad. You got it. You got the five percenters. Various artists due to the nation, mm -hmm. Million Man March, Black Power, etc. Due to the nation, you don't know the influence and example of the nation throwing stones at it. The Zionists is not against the nation if its influence and truth wasn't so potent and potential universal to change mm -hmm. the dynamics of white supremacy and white sovereignty. They clearly don't fear, um, I think, I mean, reverends and etc. Like they fear the truth of the Honorable Minister on um, Fars Khan speaks. A man that called two million black men and shut the government down on a Monday. Yep, clearly the influence of the Honorable Minister um, Farrakhan and the nation is beyond scope. All presidents do a lot. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it, it's not even up for debate. Yeah, an another good fact to me. I, I changed my uh, given name and I got me a name that, that, that identifies me with God. That's because I've read a lot about the nation and uh, Islam. Al, you got, you, you, you got issues. <laughs> issues. <laughs> I'll let you read that one. Okay, it says, whenever I see a sister with no black side, I look black at them. Backside. Backside, I'm sorry. And I look at them, those old ass records in Donovan's house. Damn, they still make you laugh. Yes, 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 yes. Very much so. Very much so. Charlie says, um, Louis Farrakhan is the man. He is on fire. He got your back. Yes. Mm -hmm. For his whole, well, and damn his whole entire yeah, life. Yeah, and, and a lot of a lot of stuff that people, like I said, one thing about the nation, they they move in silence. A lot of stuff that they're doing, you wouldn't even know right. that they are doing. Uh, a lot of uh, donations in certain charities, mm -hmm. they they do it under a pseudonym name because they don't want to be associated with it. And uh, I hope I say this right. Uh, a Tasi, peace, love, and light family. Same mm -hmm. to you. And Reginald hey. says Barack. Obama came from a family with money. Yes. Barack Hussein Obama Sr. was a king and senior government economic, yes. uh, economist. Yes, yes, he was. That and, was his father. And Obama spent a lot of time with his grandmother. And that's why I tell people, say, you know, he's a black president, but he's not the black president. You know what I mean? Because, right. Because his experience as a black man is not the same as uh, another black man Correct. of the same uh, vibe. Because if he needed $50... His white mother could give it to him. Or his white grandmother could give it to him. Because it wasn't it then. It, uh, was it said that his uh, grandparents left him? Uh, oh yeah, a significant bunch of amount of money. money. Yeah, yeah. significant uh -huh. amount of money. I said like something four thousand five hundred. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So you're right. Not to discount his blackness, because no. I don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah. No, 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 you're not black. doing that either. Yeah. But to your point, he didn't have what people would say is the typical right experience. black experience. Right. You know, the black man in America. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and. And then you say, um, um, where are you Akasi all? said, where are you? We are in Southern California. Yes. Where it is kind of, is it hot today? Or is it just me? Really. Just mine, just you. Just me. Sit next to me. Because you full of hot air. <laughs> so anyway, you guys in the podcast, we, got, uh, minute, minute we are about to get out of here. We thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday. We will be back next Sunday, as yes. always. If you have uh, any questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know. Yes, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this week, you guys heard about that bullying situation. We we're going to go talk about that on uh, Free Flow Fridays. Free, yeah, we need to learn how to say that. Free, Free Flow, Flow Fridays. Friday. We want to talk about um, bullying. I don't know if it's an epidemic, yeah, if it's it, uh, yeah, ever you, gone anywhere. Yeah, but, if you guys are on YouTube, there was a, a video, and this kid just getting oh racked. God. He's yeah. getting racked. And we have to stop telling these kids not to defend themselves. That is unnatural not to do that. And let's see. Oh, and so. Uh, oh, Fountain Valley. Oh, uh, right. you're in Fountain Valley. And Charlie says, Belgium, Europe. Wow. Ooh, wow. You're all the way across the pond. <laughs> and Marcus says, honestly, right now, I believe that Jay Z is currently the most influential black person on the planet. Mm. And before yeah. you snap. <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, hey. I mean, he, he has... says, before you snap about the NFL thing, like many said, it's history. It, uh, it's history speaks for itself. So let's see where he's going. 
to go before we decide where he's going to end up. Mm. Okay. No. So he's basically saying, let's give him a chance. Marcus, are you a part of that let's wait and see crowd too? Let's wait and see what Jay-Z is going to do. So far, he's shown us that he's got a clothing line that's coming out <laughs> right. of the NFL. He's put Shakira and J-Lo on mm -hmm. um, the lineup and Pitbull, mm -hmm. I guess now. Wait, so all his Right. Um, Where's the black artist? He, then he donated some money to a center that was cutting off black boys' dreadlocks. To, I mean, what else do you need to wait and see? Yes. What are you waiting to see that, that Jay-Z is going to do? And tell me, let, let me ask you this. What makes Jay-Z influential in the black community? Because I'm not saying he's not, but I'm he asking has great, you. He has good albums. What makes him influential? He used to be a drug dealer. I'm hoping that's not what it is, but I, I, let's see what Marcus says. And then, um, Atasi, I hope I said that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. You say any contacts here? Nation. Uh, Nation. You say you're from, what do you say he's from? He's from, uh, Fountain, Fountain Valley. Valley. Fort Valley or something. Um, is it, it's, is it yeah. Fountain Fort Valley or Fort Valley? And where is that? Because we got a Fountain Valley out yeah. here in California. Um, and Bernina says, peace and love to you both. Yes. And, to you. and Al says, Mattel has a Barbie doll as judges, um, has a Barbie doll as judges, little girls everywhere. I can be encouraged to learn about the judicial system. As a bonus, the black judges come with a special <laughs> forgiveness grip. Oh, my God. You know what? I love it. Forget I love it. it. The judge forgiving a forgiveness grip for hugging white cop Barbie. Poor Valley. Poor Valley. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, white car, uh, cop Barbie. Oops. And walked into the wrong Malibu house and killed Q -Q. a black. You know what? Law and have mercy. I love it. <sighs> and, and Charlie says Jay Z has his own money in a black bank. Okay. And then you say. Not, not, not that oh, many Georgia. Black Georgia. 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 Yeah, okay. Valley. Uh, not, not that many black banks left. There are a few, but uh, they're dying out too. I guess to I'm just waiting to see what or what Marcus is saying, uh, uh, giving us his talking points of why um, Jay Z is influential. Not saying he's not. I just want to see what you say. Rick James is influential. Yeah. Yeah. Rick James. I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he, I would say for me, Jay-Z has not been influential. I think he's done some... And I, and I don't want to take away from things that Jay-Z has done. He's done some great things. But this whole little NFL thing... Yeah, that, that, kinda, was a, uh, that was a pretty bad business. Yeah, he just... How like, he went well, about it was very, very bad. He, what, are you, what are you doing, dude? You know? Very, very bad. I mean, like, what do you have to say? You say he passed kneeling, but what do you have to say when a, a woman... 28-year-old woman gets gunned down in her own home as she's playing uh, video games with her 8-year-old nephew. Like, oh, yeah. what, like, what do you have to say about that? And so, Marcus says, the one thing we can say for sure is that Jay-Z has effectively changed the way athletes and artists get paid, and you cannot deny his influence on the hip-hop... Oh. Well, I don't know, let me see. Cannot deny his influence on the hip-hop community itself as to how they uh, are doing business as um, hardest and even the radio hosts such as members of the Record Club. Huh? How does that help the collective? Though? Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of confused on that because uh, contracts are still being signed shady in the music business, so he hasn't done anything about that. As far as athletes... And I, well, last time I heard, Kanye was suing him. Yeah, um, as far as athletes and their contracts, that's that's uh, done by the collective bargaining agreement between the owners, and I have never seen Jay-Z in a... Yeah, and in fact, the NFL has said that Jay-Z right. doesn't have anything to do, do with, with the that. players at all. Yeah, so I don't... I'm just, I'm not, you know. I mean, I, they're, they're talking points, but yeah. I guess I'm trying to figure out how does what this, mm -hmm. how does what he do, um, how does, how does those things that you said that Jay-Z is doing help the collective? Right. Because that sounds like he's helping the people who are on the same level with him, but how does that help everybody? Oh, yeah, overall, yeah. I mean, to me, why, why can't Jay-Z partner with somebody and start his own football league? Right. And, you know, if you ask me, hip-hop nowadays is Garbage. garbage but that's just my opinion yeah. and charlie says does jay-z have his money in a black bank you know that i don't know uh, i don't know i mean that's a good question good question and i uh, <laughs> arsha says jay-z anyway i think a few weeks ago i have asked you guys about jay-z and i seem to remember you two telling me he does a lot of stuff for blacks on the low no no he does, he does. um but 
better news is I read a news uh, post saying Rihanna turned down performing at yeah, the Super Bowl. She did. Hope it's true, and she's one of his artists. Yeah. she used to be. She said uh, the sellout. So yeah, she said that's their sellout. Out. She said she was not going to sell out. She says, "Why would I do that? That doesn't help my people." She's Rihanna is a real she's one. Starting to wake. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's, to wake she's a real one. To and uh, Reginald says Barack Obama's stepfather, uh, Mr. Sorry, somebody from Indonesia, worked for an yeah. oil company. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his his mother uh, married a Indonesian man. I'm sorry, Al. He said, I'm going to stop telling my jokes because you effing it up by reading too fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. What happens a lot of times is the screen will go um, up and down, and so that's why mm -hmm. I jack it up. So my, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, Reddo says, also Barack same Obama, thing. Indonesia. Same oh, okay. It's so the same one. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you guys, it's about that time. We got to go get our chicken and our piece of chicken and... A lot of the good stuff. We are out of here. Thank you so much for joining us here. Please come back next Sunday. Well, actually, we'll be back here Friday. Friday. Um, we usually try to get her on here about, what time are we going to do it this time? Friday. Before lunch. We need to do okay, so let, we'll be here about 12? About 12. 12 o'clock. It's all on her schedule. 12 o'clock uh, Pacific. Not Pacific, but Pacific. Pacific time on uh, Friday and then it's always on Sunday at 3 Pacific time. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please hit me up and I will cover them. Arsa says, replying to Marcus, but how? <laughs> Al says, thank God Lala and Keisha was fine. I ain't gonna read it because somebody might not have seen Power. I don't watch Power. <laughs> I, don't I won't give it away. And uh, Charlie says, thank you. Watch um, plenty of horror of movies. We were in October. That's what I've been doing. Yeah. I know, Michael thank, Myers. Thank yes. And Jason. Yes. Thank you, Charlie. And then uh, Reginald says, "Great show. Thank you. Thank you." And Arsenal says, "Thank you guys always for the weekly show. Talk to you soon. Yes. All right then. See y'all later. Next Peace. week. Peace."